Hi, my name is Nora. Welcome to another episode of DIY Dollhouse. Today we're going to look at how to create wall hangings and artwork for our dollhouse. So the first thing you'll want to do is look around your home and find images that make you feel happy, inspired, that you think will be cool, and will go well with the colors that you've picked for your walls and flooring. So you might find greeting cards that have interesting patterns. You can also look at magazines. And do not worry too much about the size or the scale or even the shape of the images. It's okay to have circular as well as square and rectangular artwork. And in terms of the size, you want it to fit within your house, but artwork can be a lot of different sizes, so it doesn't have to be perfectly to scale. What we're going to worry more about with scale is when we start to get into the furniture. Um, for my house, I am using a scale of 1 to 24, which means that for every one inch of my dollhouse is going to be equal to 24 inches or two feet in a, a real space. So in other words, a half an inch of my dollhouse would be equal to one foot. And it can be a little easier if you want to do a one to 12 where you have um, an inch equal to 12 inches or one inch equal to one foot. But really do whatever works best for the space that you're using. So once you have gathered materials, the next thing you want to look for is the rest of the kinds of materials that you'll need, which includes toothpicks. You'll need some kind of thread, a little thicker than sewing thread works well. This is kind of cording that's used often in jewelry making, and that works really well. You'll need some kind of glue, so I'd recommend a glue stick or rubber cement, as well as a hot glue gun, which we'll be using later today. And what is really important with the hot glue gun is that there is an adult there to make sure that it's used safely and that when you're not using it, it's not plugged in. And when you're done using it, that you unplug it and wait for it to cool down because it can get very hot. You'll also need a pair of scissors to cut the shapes that you want. And I would recommend having some kind of a ruler to create sharp straight edges. So once you've, cre once you've decided on some images that you like, you can start to think about the sizes and where you want them to hang. So I might cut out this shape here and put it in either, well this could go in pretty much any of my rooms, but I really like the way this looks, so I'm going to cut it out. And again, I'm going to measure it with a ruler or a straight edge to make sure that I cut it out very smoothly and carefully. So this could go in a lot of different places in my home because it's abstract. I'm going to continue to find images that I like and cut them out. And then I will show you ways to hang them up. So don't worry right now that your what you cut out from magazines is going to be very thin. I'm going to show you how to put a backing on them so that they will be sturdy enough to hang on the walls. But first, let me just cut out some images that I like and you can do the same. So here's something I cut out from a magazine. That's just again kind of a floral print that I thought was nice. And what I'm going to do to make it a little bit more sturdy is I'm going to back it with a piece of cardstock. It's just a kind of thicker piece of paper. 
And if you don't have cardstock, you could also back it with a thin piece of cardboard or multiple pieces of paper just to make it a little bit more sturdy. We'll just help a little bit as we're hanging it onto the wall. You don't need to do that so much for something that already is thick, like if you cut out a piece of artwork from a greeting card. You should be able to use that without having to glue it onto anything. So when I want to glue this on, you can either cut out your cardstock to begin with, or you can glue it on first and then cut it out after. So I glue that on there, and then I'm just going to carefully cut around. And often when I'm cutting, I find it easier to first cut around the shape more generally, like I might cut out a small square first instead of starting with the circle. It's a little easier to then navigate around the image once I have less paper to deal with. So once I have that cut out, so now I have two pieces that I'm going to use. And let me show you what we'll do next. Go ahead and take your cord and decide which cord you want to use. If you have multiple colors, you can find one that matches well or is a nice contrast to what you're working with. Or you can say where it will go in the room and what will work well. You're only going to need a little bit of the cord. So I would suggest cutting about an inch should be enough. Okay. Now you're going to need to plug in your hot glue gun because we're going, we're going to need that very soon. So make sure that that's plugged in and starting to warm up. While we wait for that to warm up, I'm going to take a toothpick. And I'm going to use the ends of this toothpick for today's project, but I can keep the rest of the toothpick, the middle section, and I will use that as legs for the chair that we'll be making next time. So it's a good idea to hold on to that. Okay, so for this one, all we need is a very small amount of the toothpick. And go ahead and carefully cut that with the scissors, and you might want to hold your hand underneath your do it in a place that isn't too messy so that if it rolls a little bit, you can find it easily. And again, this is just a very small little piece of the toothpick. And you might wonder why we need that. Well, that is so we can hang our art on our wall and so we can switch between different art pieces. So if you don't think you'll want to be switching art pieces, you can always glue the artwork directly to the wall. But this is a fun way to do it where you can actually put in different pieces over time and move art around between the different rooms. So let's say I'm going to start in the with the bathroom and I'm going to put a piece of art on the wall here. Okay, first I'm going to decide where oops, where I want this to be. So maybe I want it to be right here, kind of in the middle of the wall. And it might be difficult to pierce through that with just the toothpick. So I'll need one more tool and I'm going to go get a pin, a sewing pin, to pierce through the wall. So here are some pins that you are used for sewing. And this is something that you want to make sure that an adult is there to help with because they are sharp and you want to be really careful. But you don't need to pierce all the way through the wall. You can just hold your hand away from where you're going to put the needle and then go ahead and put it into this part of the wall that you want and just push it through. And then make sure to put those pins carefully away when you're done. Okay, so why did we do that? We did that so that we can hang our piece of art inside of this wall here. And so I'm going to put that little tip from the our toothpick into the wall, and now we'll see why we're going to do that. 
So I'm going to take our piece of cord that we cut and I'm going to take the hot glue gun which is now heated up and very carefully I'm going to put two little dots near the top and and then so because I'm going to glue two items I'm going to keep my glue gun on but when I'm done with this I'm going to make sure that I turn it off. So here we are. I'm going to carefully bend this. And this is a really something you have to be really careful with. Try to not get your fingers in the glue, but also finish it before the glue dries. So my glue actually dried before I could quite get that second part done, and that's okay because I can just heat it up again with the tip of the glue gun. And if I need more glue, I can just press down. But I think that's a pretty good amount that I had, just a touch more. So now bend. And again, if you're nervous about doing this with the amount of cord that I use, you can use more cord and have it go out longer on the piece of paper. That's just fine. Again, just be careful not to burn your fingers with the hot glue. And let that cool for a moment. And then when it's cool, what we're going to do is we can hang the piece of artwork right on to the wall. So let me show you what that looks like here. And you can see how that little piece of artwork is hung onto our wall. I'm going to hang one on the back of the wall so it's a little bit easier to see. So the same process, I want to cut off a little bit of toothpick. Maybe cut that a little too long, so I'm going to cut it again. There we go, just a little bit of toothpick. I'm going to take now this piece of art, pick a color cord that I like, that I think will go nicely. Get an inch, or if you want to use more than an inch, that's fine too. You can use two inches, especially with a longer, larger piece of art. Then you don't have to worry so much about the glue being near your fingers. You're going to decide which direction you want it to go. So, go like it this way. Go ahead and put those dots of glue there on the artwork. Take your cord and carefully put them into the glue so that there's a little bit hanging up and ideally it will be toward in the very middle. It's a little off, that's okay. If it really is off and you don't like the way it looks, you can always pull it once the hot glue dries, or you can make sure that the hot glue is fully dried and you can pick it off with your fingers, redo it. But the next thing we'll need to do is poke that hole into our wall. So again, take a pin carefully. Poke a hole into wherever you want that to go. I would recommend with a larger piece like this, it's a good idea to hang it up first and decide where it looks correct. So it might be a little higher than you expect. A smaller piece you can probably get away with putting right in the middle of the wall. Poke your hole, take your little toothpick in, put that right into the hole. Okay. And now we'll hang this up. Okay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So I am going to continue to decorate my house. A couple pieces of advice I want to give about this work is first of all, when you're going to pick out a magazine to use, make sure that the magazine either belongs to you or that the person 
whom it belongs is all done reading it and okay with you cutting images out of it. And so when you go then to use that magazine, I would recommend ripping out an entire page rather than trying to cut images out while they're still attached to the magazine. It just works a little bit better. Another thing I would suggest is when you have your images, have more than enough images. It's better to have too many and then realize that you are not going to use them all. If you get all the way set up and to the point where you're cutting everything out and gluing it and then realize that you have to go back and find a lot more images. So you can cut out extras and then realize that once you start uh, hanging them up on the wall, maybe they don't look quite as good as you'd hoped and you can always uh, recycle those, those images if you, they don't turn out the way you like or maybe if there's more than one person in your house working on the dollhouse, maybe that person, there's another person who likes that image. And that's the nice thing about being able to switch them out. I would also recommend trying to find images of different size and shape. It just adds a little bit of visual interest to your walls. And same with images that have different color patterns, different textures, those kinds of things. Just like in your own house, you might see that not, you don't have the same image on every wall of your house. Your dolls will also appreciate the variety. So I have here a lot of images that I want to hang up. And what I'm doing is just gluing them all onto the cardstock because they're all magazine images. So they're the thinner, shiny paper, but they have a nice glossy quality, which is one advantage. So here's some images that I like. So I'm going to now cut these out and then I'm going to repeat all of the steps, hang them up on the wall and show you my finished product. You might be wondering, what if I want to have picture frames on for some of my images. And that's definitely something you can do. One way I would recommend doing that is to actually glue your paper onto the color that you want to use for the picture frame. So whether that's a wood color, a black, a white, a gray, and it could be any, really any color. And then you'll just want to measure out around that, around your image as you are, before you cut it, and then leave that additional space. So I will show an example here with one of my images. So say this image here, I want to have a little bit of a white frame around it. Then I'm just going to measure out I'm just going to use about an eighth of an inch for mine because again my, I'm working with a pretty small scale. So I'll measure out an eighth of an inch around each side. And go ahead and draw that out. And then when I cut it, I'll just cut out that extra part around and that will be the picture frame. You can of course attach materials on the outside to make a picture frame, especially if you want one to stand out and look more three-dimensional, but when you're working in the smallest scale that's a little bit challenging, so I would just say um, this is a good alternative to try. And if you are able to do it the other way, then that is great. All right, so now clean up a little bit. Some of the sides are not perfect. Even. All right, that's pretty even. So then you can see this one looks now more like an image with a picture frame 
around it. Okay. This one. If you're using a circular image and you want to create a circular picture frame, um, you can either use a compass that's used in math, or you can, I would recommend what's a little easier is to find something that is circular and larger, like maybe the cap of something, the lid and trace around that. That can give you a good, a good circular. I have some dogs on my street who were very excited about something. All right, so again, then you can just trace, use that. to create that outer circle as a round picture frame. You may just have to go back in and even it out a little bit. If it doesn't turn out the way you like, you can always stick with cutting off, but that's the idea there. So, just have a few more to cut here. We talked about having a clean workspace and you can see mine is pretty messy, but it will be cleaner once I'm Done with this project. All right, so now, as I mentioned before, it's really important to turn off your glue gun when you're not using it. So I did turn mine off, which means that now I'm going to need to turn it back on by plugging it in. So that is plugged in, it's going to heat up. I also want to make sure that I put away the pin when I'm not using it. So I'm gonna take that back out again. And I'm going to now find the places on my wall that I want to pin these up. And then I'm going to cut off the toothpick tips, put them up, glue the backings, and I will hang them all up. Think about where you want to place them. So if you have more than one on a wall, you want to get more than one hole. And if it's a very tall piece, you'll want to hang that higher than a smaller one. Put the pins away. All right. Close up my glue. And now I get to pick the cords that go with each of these. and check if my glue gun is hot enough. And just really carefully on the paper, press down. And it might not be yet. I might need to wait a little longer and that's fine. So what I can do if it's not ready yet is I can cut out, cut off the tips of my toothpicks. And again, remember to save those pieces because we will use those next time. Oops. That's what can happen sometimes. So that one's flying a little bit. So just try to be a little more careful. There we go. There.
can be a little bit tricky to find where he put those holes, especially if the wallpaper is a little bit darker. I need a flashlight. Need to make a new hole. Let's see that one. Sometimes it helps to twist the toothpick a little bit as you're pushing it in. Can help. Okay. So now I would assume that this hot glue gun is a little bit hotter. So again, just going to try it on the paper. Never touch it with your fingers. Just try pushing it onto the paper and see if the glue comes out. And if it is the glue is soft enough to put the thread on it, then that is good. All right, you might get these little threads of glue and that's fine. These abstract pieces, you might kind of want to look at which way you think it goes better. Okay, I'm just going to check that all of my places have artwork and it looks like I'm missing one. So, one more to do. Okay, last step, unplug my glue gun. Make sure my needles, my pins and needles are all put away. Close up that case. Make sure my glue has its lid on, that my scissors are closed. All right, and I will clean up after, but what I wanna look at now is how all of this turned out. So you can see the artwork in those different rooms and you can hopefully have some inspiration to decorate your dollhouse. See you next time.